Hello guys, it's your favorite teacher, Gutsin, and you know what it is. This is Wit Loud, learning made easy. Today we're going to be considering a concept known as preferential discharge of ions, which is a continuation of our electrolysis series. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Remember, Wit Loud, learning made easy. So let's look at this, preferential discharge of ions. Before we come to this, I would like to say this. Electrolysis is defined as the chemical decomposition of a compound which is brought about by a passage of electricity through the substance in its liquid state. And having established this, we mentioned in the last video that anytime a chemical decomposition occurs, it occurs by discharging ions. But in this case, we see the term preferential discharge. Why are we talking about preferential discharge? Preference is given if there are multiple choices or in a place where competition occurs that's where you talk about preference and because of that statement preference it implies that the electrolyte must have more than one competing ions such electrolyte is formed by dissolving a substance in water to form an aqueous solution so get strapped as we go into the study Whenever you are considering preferential discharge, you are looking at a solution, an aqueous solution, an electrolyte which is formed by an aqueous solution. And there are three factors to consider in that preferential discharge. But before we go on, see what I mean. If you have an electrolyte, sodium chloride, and you dissolve it in water, the constituent ions of sodium chloride are Na plus and Cl minus. That of water are H plus and OH minus. The implication is that you have two positive ions which will be competing and two negative ions which will be competing. Remember, the cations are attracted to cathode where they are discharged by reduction, while the anions are attracted to the anode where they are discharged by oxidation. Don't forget this. Cathodic reduction, anodic oxidation. Okay, so let's move on. The cations, because we have a multiple choice here, which one of them is going to be chosen? We don't know. And how are we going to know by listening or putting our heads to study the factors which must be considered for preferential discharge to occur. And I said, how many are they? There are three of them. So let's look into the three of them. The first factor that is considered whenever you are dealing with preferential discharge of ions is the position of the ions in the electrochemical series. That is the first factor. Position of the ions in the electrochemical series. The second factor that is considered is concentration of the ions. And the final factor considered is nature of the electrode. So we'll be taking a study on these three factors and then it will help us understand how we are going to choose the electrolyte or the ion that is going to be preferentially discharged. Let's start with the first one, position in the electrochemical series. First of all, we need to understand the electrochemical series. Electrochemical series is an arrangement of ions. It is an arrangement of ions on the basis of increasing standard reduction potential from top to bottom. Increasing standard reduction potential from top to bottom. So have this in mind. When you're looking at the reduction potential of a particular substance, the order in which it is arranged is what we have when we talk about our electrochemical series. The question now is, what is standard reduction potential? A complete study will be done on this, but for our basic understanding, just see it for now in this video as the potential to be reduced. Standard reduction potential in this video, take it as the potential to be reduced. So it increases from top to bottom and that is what defines the electrochemical series. However, we are not going to be dealing with the standard reduction potential for now. We are going to consider some other things in the electrochemical series. Now, the electrochemical series is not necessarily divided into positive and negative, but for an easy understanding, I will be splitting that electrochemical series of popular ions into a positive electrochemical series and a negative electrochemical series. So let's see. A very simple mnemonics has been helping out to understand this and put it in head. You can actually use this if you want to. And the mnemonics for the positive ECS is the king can now marry all Zarian female slaves 
provided he could mercury silver and gold so this is the mnemonics that i used to try to keep it in head king can now marry all the real female slaves provided he could make receiver good so let's get to their actual ions king is potassium ion can is calcium 2 plus noun is na plus sodium plus magnesium 2 plus is mari all is aluminium 3 plus zarian is zn 2 plus female is fe 2 plus slave is sn 2 plus provided is pb 2 plus he is hydrogen plus code is cu2 plus mercury is hg2 plus silver is ag plus and gold is au plus now having put this down you understand that um the mnemonics which is used to remember this is the king can now marry all zarian female slaves provided he could mercury silver gold try to put it in head but before that i would like you to understand something about this series in this series electropositivity increases from bottom to top that is to say electropositivity decreases from top to bottom so we have positive decreases so whenever you are dealing with the positive ecs it implies that the positive ones are above the more positive ones are above the less positive ones are below so electropositivity decreases down from top to bottom we consider our negative ECS. In our negative ECS, the mnemonics used is OKK Ivan brought Clara nonsense sun flower, which is hydroxyl ion, iodine ion, bromine ion, chlorine ion, glutonitrate 5 ion sulfate ion and fluorine ion so you have that as your negative mnemonics okay K. ivan brought clara nonsense sun flower take it again okay K. ivan brought clara nonsense sun flower now if electropositivity decreases from top to bottom it means that electronegativity will do the opposite thing from top to bottom which is increase so you have an increase in electronegativity so negative increases from top to bottom while positive decreases from top to bottom having mentioned this we now come back to what we are actually supposed to be discussing and that is position in the ECS now there is a general concept in preferentially discharging ion especially when there are two competing ions the general concept is this weaker ions are preferentially discharged in a competition between ions in the ecs weaker ions are preferentially discharged a simple analogy is this take for instance you have an ice cream seller or you are an ice cream seller and as you were about to close shop just one ice cream was remaining and then two people came into the shop to buy it one of them was a three-year-old which dressed beautiful and is looking as cute as ever and the second person is a grumpy old man now you have just one ice cream both of them have money who are you going to sell that ice cream to obviously the young girl why because she is the weaker person dear so have this in mind weaker ions are always preferentially discharged the ukrainian war for instance or in any other war you find out that whenever there is war the women and children are preferentially removed from the country because they are weaker while the men stay and fight so have this in mind in the competition between two ions the weaker ions are always preferentially discharged however what do we mean by the weaker ions the weaker ions are the less electropositive or the less electronegative so let's find that out we said that there would be a decrease in electropositivity and because we are dealing with electropositive decrease it means that the ions above are more electropositive than the ions below so the weaker ions are located below so put that down weaker ions are located below 
weaker ions are located below in the positive ECS, while stronger and explosive ions are located above. It's the vice versa when you come to the negative ECS. In the negative ECS, the stronger ions are located below while the weaker ions are located above. The point is just have this concept that you have positivity decreases for positive and negativity increases for negative. So have this in mind, find or locate the weaker ions and you have your answer. So let's get to do this. Imagine you have a particular question and in that question, sodium is competing with hydrogen for preferential discharge. Sodium is competing with hydrogen for preferential discharge. Notice, sodium is above hydrogen, meaning that it is more electropositive than hydrogen. And because of that, sodium is stronger while hydrogen is weaker. The principle of preferential discharge is that the weaker ion is going to preferential discharge, which implies that hydrogen is going to preferential discharge to sodium. Let's go to the negative. You have a competition between hydroxyl and chlorine. In this case, it's vice the other way around. That is to say, the stronger ones are down, the weaker ones are up. For negative, stronger ones are down. For positive, stronger ones are up. So have that. The stronger or more electronegative ions are below, the weaker are above. So who is going to preferentially discharge between chlorine and OH? Obviously, the weaker ions in the electronegative ECS is above. Hydroxyl will be preferentially discharged. But in the case of your positive ECS, the weaker ions are down. So any ion that is below for the positive is preferentially discharged, while any ion that is above for the negative is preferentially discharged. Okay, so I haven't said that. I believe we have understood something. You could try out this example. You have a competition between ion and lead. Who is going to be preferentially discharged? The weaker ion. Ion is more electropositive than lead, so lead is preferentially discharged. Correct. You have a competition between trioxonitrate and iodine. Trioxonitrate 5 and iodine. Trioxonitrate 5 is more electronegative than iodine. Therefore, iodine is going to be preferentially discharged. So have this in mind that for the negative ECS, the less electronegative are above, while the more electronegative are below. On the other hand, it's the other way around in the positive ECS. The more electropositive are, be are above, while the less electropositive are below. So for negative, you are dealing with electronegativity. For positive, you are dealing with electropositivity. With this said, we can move on. Weaker ions are preferentially discharged. Okay. Now, there are scenarios where weaker ions are not necessarily considered. And the position in ECS seems to be null and void in this case. And that is when concentration is involved. Yes. When considering concentration, you have to be very careful to note that the weaker ions are not always going to be preferentially discharged. So what do I mean by that? In a competition between closely positioned ions, have this in mind, in a competition between closely positioned ions, the more concentrated ion is always preferentially discharged. I take it again, in a competition between closely positioned ions, the more concentrated ion is preferentially discharged. So you notice that when you talk about concentration, you're not just looking at weaker or stronger. You're looking at if they are closely positioned, the one that has a higher concentration will be preferentially discharged. What if they're not closely positioned? Then what do you do? You go back and consider your position in the ECS. But once you notice that the competing ions are closely positioned, please check out for concentration. If there's a difference in the concentration, the more concentrated ion is always preferentially discharged. So what do I mean? Um, in considering proximity, um, I would like you to just use the number three. Once they are more than three steps proximal, they are no more in proximity. That is to say, if you want to consider proximity, just count three times. One, two, Three. That is the maximum number I want you to use for your proximity. If it is beyond three steps, forget it. They are not proximal. So we have, for instance, hydroxyl ion. We have one, two, three. The implication is that anything beyond iodine, bromine, and chlorine is not proximal to hydroxyl. Have this in mind. Anything beyond iodine, bromine, and chlorine is not proximal to hydroxyl. So whenever you are dealing with concentration, 
whenever you are noticing the difference in concentration please before you consider concentration think of proximity yes before you consider concentration think of proximity once the competing ions are proximal and one of them has a higher concentration the more concentrated ion is preferentially discharged and i give you a number three steps just three steps if it's beyond three steps forget it they are not considered as proximal so if i have a competition between hydroxyl ion and chlorine where chlorine is more concentrated on a normal hydroxyl based on position in ecs which is the weaker ion should have been preferentially discharged but we have a different factor now that if they are proximal and one of them is more concentrated forget about the position in ecs the concentrated ion is preferentially discharged and i told you that the number of proximity is three so we have hydroxyl and chlorine where chlorine is more more concentrated if chlorine is more concentrated you will not discharge hydroxyl what will be discharged is chlorine because in a competition between closely positioned ions in which one of the ions is more concentrated the more concentrated ion is preferentially discharged okay try this imagine i have a competition between magnesium and zinc remember i told you that the number for proximity is three times so you have one two three meaning that any element between magnesium and zinc sorry magnesium and iron magnesium aluminium zinc and iron these four in this series are proximal to each other if it goes beyond this any element beyond this is not so proximal downward to magnesium i take it again for you to consider concentration and pick the more concentrated ion the competing ions have to be proximal the maximum number is three. when i say proximal i mean they have to be close to each other and the maximum number count i give for this particular uh, analysis is three having said that we said a competition between magnesium and zinc magnesium and zinc so we are competing between magnesium and zinc and then in this case magnesium is more concentrated what is going to happen magnesium on a normal shouldn't have been chosen but because magnesium and zinc are proximal we don't consider position in ecs what is going to be considered now is concentration and the more concentrated ion is preferentially discharged so have this in mind in a competition between closely positioned ions in the ecs the more concentrated ion is preferentially discharged if the concentrations are the same thing then no problem you apply ecs that's position in the ECS. But once they have a difference in concentration and they are proximal, if they are not proximal, do not consider concentration. Yes, if they are not proximal, do not consider concentration. For instance, you have sodium competing with hydrogen. If sodium is competing with hydrogen and sodium is more concentrated, proximity is just three and hydrogen is way down here. So we are not going to consider concentration. Once they are not proximal, do not consider concentration. However, if they happen to be close to each other, in the table the more concentrated ion is preferential discharge irrespective of which one is stronger or weaker okay having understood the principle of concentration of ions we would get to understand the third factor which is nature of electrons yes nature of electrons the first thing i would like to say is that certain electrodes have special affinities for specific ions and once there is an affinity for a specific ion that electrode would only discharge that ion once there is a relationship between an electrode and an ion the ion in question would always be discharged when that electrode is used irrespective of concentration and irrespective of the position in the ecs i take it again whenever there is a special affinity between a specific electrode and a particular ion that ion is going to be preferentially discharged always irrespective of concentration and irrespective of the position in the ecs so what am i trying to say i could use this illustration to help you understand it imagine i'm in a class and in my class i have the most beautiful cheerleader in that class and i have a girlfriend who is not so fine or not as fine as my cheerleader now as we are sitting in the class something happened the cheerleader's pen, he finished. And the beautiful cheerleader turned to me politely and said, Godson, please, may I have one pen from you? As a gentleman, I had to put my hand in my bag 
and bring out the pen. But as I was about to give it to the beautiful cheerleader who is worthy of the pen, my girlfriend looks at me and in jealousy says, God sin, give me that pen. Please, class, for my relationship to continue, who did I give that pen to? Obviously, my girlfriend, if I want to keep that relationship, I have to do what she has to say. Yes, the point is, the cheerleader was more polite. The cheerleader was was the one in need of the pen. The cheerleader is more beautiful than my girlfriend. But it does not matter if I want to keep the relationship. Once there is a relationship, the preferential discharge is always towards the person in the relationship. So have this in mind. An electrode has a relationship with an ion. That ion, come what may, would always be preferentially discharged. You can't pick any other person above your girlfriend or your wife or anybody that you are in a serious relationship with. So have this in mind. The point is this. Once an electrode has an affinity for an ion, you see that electrode, it would only pick that ion. It would only discharge the ion just as it happened. I was about to give it to the qualified cheerleader. Beautiful, politely asked me and she needed the pen. But when my girlfriend came calling and said, yo, Gotten, give me that pen. She wasn't polite, she's not as fine as the cheerleader, but because I have a relationship with her, I preferentially discharge the pen to her. So have this in mind. If an electrode has a relationship with an ion, that ion is always going to be preferentially discharged. Now, the most paramount example of this case is the sodium and mercury relationship. The sodium and mercury relationship. See mercury as the boyfriend and sodium ion as the girlfriend. The implication is that whenever you are dealing with sodium and mercury and mercury is used as a cathode, sodium ion is going to be always preferentially discharged because there is a relationship between the two of them. See what I mean. The example. Let's consider the electrolysis of brine using mercury electrode as the cathode and platinum as the anode okay or more or less let's use let's use graphite let's use graphite let's use graphite words okay so we have that and then our electrolyte is brine. Now, what is brine? Brine is a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. In this case, it means that if we are to consider brine, the first thing I would like you to understand is that the compounds or constituent compounds of brine are sodium chloride and water. The cations, the cations of brine are sodium ion and hydrogen ion. While the anions of brine are chlorine ion and hydroxyl ion. Please note, brine is a concentrated solution of sodium chloride, meaning that sodium and chlorine are more concentrated. Thank you. With that said, the cathode would attract cations, which is Na plus and H plus, while the anode will attract anions Cl minus and OH minus. So, based on our study, you will find out that the anions are attracted to the anode. And when they get to the anode, they are going to be preferentially discharged. Before we even go further, let's now look at which one of them is going to be preferentially discharged based on our factors. Factor number one means we should consider the position in ECS. And if we had considered that alone, hydroxyl would have won the bid because it is the weaker ion. But that's not the only factor there. We said we are doing the electrolysis of brine, implying that chlorine is more concentrated. And in a competition between proximally positioned ions, the more concentrated ion is preferentially discharged. Chlorine and hydroxyl ion are proximal. And because of their proximity, chlorine is going to be preferentially discharged. So, for this case, chlorine is preferentially discharged. So, let's do that. Anodes discharge their ions by oxidation. So, we are going to have oxidation of chlorine, which is the loss of electron, to give the neutral chlorine gas. If we are to balance it, we are going to have this. So, we have that because of the fact that chlorine is more concentrated than the hydroxyl group, and then it is closely positioned. The more concentrated ion has to be discharged. Let's go to the cathode. At the cathode, we have mercury as the cathode, 
and then we have sodium and hydrogen we've already said this that once an electrode has a special affinity for a particular ion that ion is going to be professionally discharged irrespective of whatever thing you are saying so cathode mercury would definitely discharge sodium case closed so with this i hope we've learned something about preferential discharge of ions thank you very much for watching this video remember this is wits lounge learning made easy